Hello to you watching this video. So for this video, we're going to discuss about module number 5, Traversing in Traverse Computation. So in this module, we will explain the concepts of traversing and illustrate how to balance a traverse using compass rule and transit rule. Traverse area by DMD and DPD method. Okay. So what is traversing? So traversing is the process of measuring the lengths and directions of the lines of a traverse for the purpose of locating the position of certain points. Okay, I repeat, it is the uh, process of measuring lengths and directions of lines of traversing for the purpose of locating the position of certain points. Okay, so a traverse is a series of consecutive lines whose ends have been marked in the field and whose lengths and direction have been determined from an observation. Okay, one of the most basic and widely practiced means of determining the relative location of points. So we have two kinds of traverse. So we have the open traverse and we have the closed traverse. So at, uh, as the definition says a while ago, it is a series of consecutive lines. So it is a series of consecutive lines who uh, whose ends have been marked in the field. So nakamark ka yung mga end na yan and nalalaman natin yung lengths and direction. So we have the lengths and we have the direction. So the first one is open traverse. So an open traverse is said to be open traverse when the traverse starts at one point and terminates at another point. So nag-start ka sa isang point and hindi ka nag end sa the same point. Okay? So open traverse is also called unclosed traverse. It is suitable for surveying of roads, coastals, uh, coastal lines, and etc. Okay? So I repeat, open traverse. Nag-start ka at one point and mag magka-close ka at one point. Next would be a closed traverse. So what is a closed traverse? A closed traverse is said to be closed traverse when the traverse form a closed circuit as shown in the figure. In this case, both starting and terminating points of the traverse coincide with each other. It is suitable for the survey of boundaries of ponds, sport grounds, forests, etc. Um, the most common uh, kind of this would be for um, house, uh, for lot survey. No? That is a closed traverse. So, pag nagsusuk nagsusukat tayo ng lupa. Okay? So, you started at this point, and if you're going to follow the, tra uh, the traverse, it will close at the same point. Therefore, it is a closed traverse. Or nag-end siya sa same point. Okay? What is a traverse station? So, a traverse station is any temporary or permanent point of reference over which the instrument is set up. Kung saan nakaset up yung instrument, then that can be a traverse station. It is usually marked by a peg or hub driven, uh, driven flash with the ground and identified by consecutive letters or numbers as the survey progresses. Traverse stations are sometimes called angle points between the, uh, an angle is usually measured at such location. Okay? Next is traverse lines. So, are lines connecting traverse stations and whose lengths and direction are determined? So, we have traverse station and traverse lines. Okay? So, what are the methods in uh, of traversing? So, the traversing is performed by four different methods and these methods are classified according to the survey instrument used. The methods are as follows. Number one, we have chain traversing. So, chain traversing is done by taking linear measurements only. Okay? I repeat, linear measurements only. Hence, the chain or tape is enough for the chain traversing. The angle between the adjacent traverse lines is measured using the chain angle concept. So, if, uh, for example, balikan natin yung traverse natin, uh, this line will be uh, determined by the chain, then, to get the angle in between two adjacent uh, lines, then we are going to use the uh, chain angles concept. So chain traversing is performed in areas such as ponds, etc. Okay? So where it is difficult to adapt triangulation, like for because when we know uh, when we say ponds, pabilog yan. Okay? So it is very difficult to uh, have a triangulation 
on that uh, matter. So chain is quite helpful in that manner. Okay. So the chain angles concept is nothing but finding the angle between two adjacent sides by establishing the third side using tie stations. This angle between the sides can also be fixed by establishing a chord of known length between sides. Next would be the compass traversing. So in this case of compass traversing, both linear and angular measurement of traverse lines are taken by using chain and prismatic compass respectively. Both fore uh, bearing and back bearings are measured and required corrections for local attraction are applied. If any closing error is obtained while plotting of traverse, then uh, Bowditch rule is applied for the adjustment of error. Okay, So for compass traversing, we use the compass. Next would be the theodolite traversing. In the case of theodolite traversing, the linear measurements are done by using chain or stadia method. And angular measurement are done, measurements are done by theodolite. So using the theodolite, the magnetic bearing of the first traverse line is measured from that magnetic bearing of the other sides are calculated. This method is very accurate compared to other methods. Okay, so we have explained this, uh, the stadia method, uh, the stadia leveling so in our previous video so you have there your stadia and you're going to see through the instrument then you're going to read the crosshairs then you already have your reading then uh, that's for the uh for the distance now for uh for the angle you're going to read it through the compass in the transit okay so next is plane table traversing in the case of plane table traversing the measuring and plotting of traverse on the paper are done simultaneously. So the plane table equipment is set up at very traverse station one by one in a clockwise or anti-clockwise direction. The sides of each traverse station are drawn on paper to a suitable scale. If there is any closing error, graphical methods are used for its adjustment. Okay. So in traversing, the methods used in uh, observing angles or direction of traverse lines vary and include number one, interior angles, number two, angles to the right, number three, deflection angles, and number four, azimuths. So we have already defined this, this for, uh, uh, this for important uh, angles that we need in order for us to determine our traverse, okay? So, the length of each traverse line, also called a course, must be observed. And this is usually done by simplest and most economical method capable of satisfying the required precision of any given project. Of course, kung wala kang length, then walang silbi yung <laughs> survey, okay? So, the important parts are your uh, the length and the direction, okay? So, angle misclosure. So, the angular misclosure for an interior angle traverse is the difference between the sum of the observed angles and the geometrical geometrically correct total for the polygon. The sum of the interior angles of a closed polygon should be n minus 2 quantity times 180 degrees. When we say angle misclosure, for example, in a four polygon, for example, a square we know that the interior angle of a square is uh 360 degrees but it so happened that we only were we were only able to measure 359 degrees therefore the difference between 360 and 359 is one degree therefore that is our angle miss closure that one degree okay here n is the number of sides or angles in the polygon Misclosures result from accumulation of random errors in angle observation. I repeat, result from accumulation of random errors in the angle observations. What is the angular misclosure of five-sided polygon traverse with observed angles? So in a five-sided polygon, we were able to get 83 degrees, 07.23 uh, minutes. 
105 degrees 23.01 minutes 124 degrees 56.48 minutes 111 degree 51.31 uh, minutes 114 degrees 41.27 minutes okay so let us check so to determine the interior angles we have n minus 2 so 5 minus 2 that is 3 times 180 so that is 540 degrees now if we are to sum this ipag-add natin to ipag-add natin tong apat na values we're going to add these five values the uh, interior angle the observed interior angle is equivalent to 539 degrees 59 minutes and 18 seconds but the uh, geometric sum if we're going to get determine the interior angle of the five uh sided polygon it is 540 degrees therefore there is a uh misclosure there is an angle misclosure of zero uh of 42 seconds okay so what we're going to do in order to balance this angle we're going to distribute this 42 degrees into this five angles okay so it is negative so zero point uh, zero degrees 0 minutes 42 seconds divided by 5 therefore there is an angle uh, of correction of negative 0 degrees 8 minutes and 4.8.4 seconds for every angle okay so dito kinulang tayo if you're going to see kinulang tayo ng 42 seconds so to correct that error magdadagdag tayo ng uh, magdadagdag tayo ng 8.4 seconds on each of the angle. Kasi kinulang. Okay? Take note, the total sum is less than 540. But if it so happened that this is positive, the observed sum is greater than the geometric sum. For example, this is 540. Then this is 540 degrees and 42 seconds. Sumobra, ibabawas natin siya dito. But since kinulang tayo ng uh, ng tig 8 seconds and 8.4 seconds per angle we are going to add so kopyahin natin isa-isa 83 degrees 105 degrees 124 degrees 111 degrees and 114 degrees so take note these angles are uh, are lacking 8.4 seconds each so magdadagdag tayo 83 uh, minutes uh, 83 degrees 0. Uh, 0.07.23 minutes plus 8.4 seconds and this is now uh, what you uh, what you call the adjusted angle okay so again this is now what you call the adjusted angle so 105 degrees 23.01 minutes plus 8.4 seconds so this is now your adjusted angle now to check whether your answer is correct get the sum of your adjusted angle the summation of your adjusted angle should be equivalent to the interior angle, which is 540 degrees. Okay? So, pag equal na yan, then your answer is correct. Okay. Next would be the traverse computations. Measured angles or directions of closed traverses are readily investigated before leaving the field. Okay? So, I repeat, dapat bago ka umalis ng field, Chine-check mo yung close traverse mo pag nag-close. If specifications have been satisfied, the traverse is then adjusted to create perfect closure or geometry consistency among angles and lengths. If not, field observation must be repeated until adequate results are obtained. So, what are the steps that's, uh, that, need, uh, that needed to be followed? Number one, adjusting angles or directions to fix geometric conditions. Number two, determining preliminary azimuths or bearing for the traverse lines. Number three, calculating departures and latitudes and adjusting them for misclosure. So later, I will be, uh, I will discuss what, what is a departure and latitude. Number four, computing rectangular coordinates of the traverse stations and Number five, calculating the lengths and azimuths or bearings of the traverse lines after adjustments. 
After balancing the angles, the next step in traverse computation is calculation of either preliminary azimuths or the preliminary bearings. This requires the direction of at least one course within the, uh, the traverse to be either known or assumed. For some computational purposes, an assumed direction is sufficient. And in that case, the usual procedure is to simply assign north as the direction of one of the traverse lines on certain traverse surveys. I repeat, usually, ina-assign natin is the north as the direction of one of the traverse lines. On certain traverse surveys, the magnetic bearing of the line can be determined and used as reference for determining other directions. Okay? After balancing the angles and calculating preliminary azimuths or your bearing, traverse closure is checked by computing the departure and latitude. So we need to check if it is closing, our traverse is closing. Okay? So what is a departure? Departure is the course of uh, is its departure of a course is its orthographic projection on the east-west axis of the survey. So departure, uh, in layman's term, is the x coordinate. Okay, is the x coordinate, or it is the x axis rather. It is the axis of your uh, line or your distance AB. Okay. While latitude is the y axis, okay? It is the y axis or the y coordinates of your uh, line, okay? Departure is for the x, the change in uh, position between a and b for uh, along the x axis. Uh, latitude is the change in the position for the y axis between a and b. So, pag sinabing departure, horizontal. Latitude, vertical. Okay? If it is on the positive side, therefore, your latitude is positive. If it is on the negative side, below our reference point, it is negative. If the departure is on the right side of the origin, it is positive. If it is on the left side of the origin, it is negative. Okay? So, uh, for the latitude, north is positive, south is negative. For the departure, east is positive, west is negative. Okay? Yan. So, the magnitudes of the departure and latitude misclosures for closed polygon type traverse given, I give an indication of the precision that exists in the observed angles and distances. If one were to begin at point A of a closed polygon traverse, and progressively follow each course for its observed distance along its preliminary bearing or azimuth, one would finally return, uh, finally return not to point A, but some uh, other nearby points. This point could be removed from A in an east-west direction by uh, departure, misclosure. So, dapat kasi, if we start here, we start here, supposedly, babalik siya dito. But if, uh, if it so happen, dito ka nag-start, pero hindi siya dyan bumalik, then this point, could, uh, this point would be removed from A in an east-west direction by the departure, misclosure. So though, uh, there is a departure, misclosure. And for the north-south direction, there is a latitude, misclosure, misclosure. Latitude, misclosure. Horizontal, misclosure. The distances between A and A is determined the linear misclosure of the traverse. It is calculated from the following formula. So, C squ uh, CD squared, or the misclosure along the departure squared, plus the uh, misclosure along the uh, latitude squared over, uh, no, then get the square root. Okay? So, that is your linear misclosure of traverse. Now, for the relative precision, linear misclosure divided by the length of traverse. Okay, so we have here an illustrative problem. So, uh, calculate the departure and latitudes, linear misclosure, and relative precision of the traverse here. Okay, so... 
Okay, so what we're going to do is ituloy na lang natin muna hanggang sa uh, sa traverse adjustment. Papakita ko sa inyo yung solution ng sabay. Okay, so dito ang what we're going to do is uh, get the latitude departure and the linear misclosure. Okay, madali lang yan. So, eto siya. So, how are, we, how are we able to get this answer? We will explain it later. Next would be the traverse adjustment. For any closed traverse, the linear misclosure must be adjusted or distributed throughout the traverse to close or balance the figure. So, since ganito yung lumabas sa ating uh, data, mer hindi nagkaroon ng uh, closure. Hindi siya bumalik. Mer there is a difference of 0.03 for the departure and there is a misclosure of 0.07 for the lat latitude. What we need to do is to distribute this to this uh, to this 5 departure and this 0.07 to this 5 latitude. Okay? It is what we call to close the traverse or balancing. Kailangan natin i-balance. So that, if we're going to add this 5 departure, uh, the misclosure would be equivalent to 0. And the misclosure here would also be equivalent to 0. Okay? So there are several elementary methods available for traverse adjustment. But the most commonly used are, number 1, we have the compass rule or the Bowditch method. Rule adjusts the departure and the latitudes of the traverse courses in proportion to their length. Okay? nag adjust yung departure and latitude ng traverse in proportion sa length nila. Okay? So, the correction of the departure is equivalent to the uh, departure, uh, departure misclosure divided by the P. What is P? It is the total length of uh, the traverse times the length of the clo uh, the course. So that is the departure since it is uh, um, we are dealing with the correction of departure. Okay? And for the latitude it is the correction uh, the misclosure in latitude divided by the total length of the traverse times the length of that uh, that line. Okay? Next would be the transit rule. Now for the transit rule each course is used is adjusted using the following formulas. So we have here the uh, correction uh, for the, the uh, departure. It is the misclosure on the de uh, departure divided by the summation of the departure times the departure of the course. Same with the uh, latitude. It is CL over the summation of the latitude times the latitude of that course. Okay, so this problem here is the same as this one. Okay, so what we're going to do is to determine the departure in latitudes, the linear misclosure, yung linear misclosure, ito yun, and we're going to get the, uh, we're going to balance using the compass rule in the transit rule. Okay, so ito, transfer ko lang sa word para uh, nasasagutan natin. We can edit the answers. And yeah, kasi pag sa PDF lang, we can only view it. No? So, okay. So, we have here the given course, A, B, B, C, C, D, D, E, and E, A. It has an azimuth and it is referenced with the north. Okay, and we have the length. Okay. So take note, like what I've said, since we're already in the we are in the Philippines, our azimuth reference will always be the south. Okay? Will always be the south. If nakalagay dyan, azimuth in, then naka reference tayo sa north. But if it is only stated as azimuth or azimuth s, then we assume that it is in reference with the south, since we are in the Philippine setting. Okay? So, the first thing that I need to do is to convert this azimuth to azimuth south. Azimuth north to azimuth south. So, from the north, uh, line AB, from the north, it is 126 degrees. So, it is in between this because this is uh, from the north, this is 92, 180. So, to determine the azimuth south, I'll just simply going to add 180 degrees. 
So 180 degrees plus 126 degrees 55 minutes and 17 seconds, that is equivalent to 306 degrees 55 minutes and 17 seconds. Next is 178. So 178 is between east and south. Okay, so take note. Uh, uh, it is uh, from the north, so to have it so in south, and since the rotation is clockwise, not counterclockwise, then I am going to subtract, add, no, subtract, I am going to add 180 degrees. So 180 degrees plus 178 degrees, 18 minutes, 58 seconds, that is equivalent to 358 degrees, 18 minutes, and 58 seconds. Next is for 15 degrees. 31 minutes and 54 seconds from the north. So it is in between northeast. Okay. So to have the azimuth, just simply add 180 degrees. So it will be coming now from the south. So that is equivalent to 180 plus this angle. That is 195, 31,54. Okay. Next line DE is 284. So, from the north, this is 0 to 90, 90 to 180, 180 to 270. So, 270 to 360. Uh, so, 270 to 360 degrees. So, therefore, 284 degrees, 35 minutes and 20 seconds, it be, is between north west. So, what I'm going to do is to subtract 180 degrees so 100 uh, 284 degrees 35 minutes 20 seconds minus 180 is equivalent to 104 degrees 35 minutes and 20 seconds and lastly we have the uh, uh, azimuth north of 206 degrees 9 minutes and 42 seconds so that is 0 to 90 90 to 180 180 to 270 therefore the angle is here so what I'm sim uh, what I'm going to do is simply subtract 180 degrees. Okay, so 206 degrees, nine minutes and 40 42 seconds minus 180 degrees is equivalent to 26 degrees 42 nine minutes and 42 seconds. And copy the length. So this is this. Uh, I will delete this. So this now will be my new reference. Okay. Okay, so uh, i-correct na natin yung ating angles. So, copyhin natin, then paste. But if you can do away with uh, your azimuth, kaya yung dumiretso agad sa bearing, then well and good, no? Because that reduces the time of solving. Kasi medyo um, matrabaho to pag isosolve manually. Okay? But if you are... Uh, quite familiar with Excel, then medyo mabilis lang to isosolve on your part. Okay? So, as I've said, the next thing that we need to do after the azimuth is to solve our bearing because the bearing will uh, will help us solve the latitude and departure okay, with the help of cosine and sine function. Okay? So, 306, so uh, 306 degrees, that is 0 to 90, 90 to 180, 180 to 270, 270 to 360. So, these two angles here will be on this quadrant, okay? Quadrant number 4. And the angle is rotating clockwise from the south. Therefore, the 306 degrees is this angle here but what, uh, the angle that I need is in reference with the south so what I'm going to do is 360 minus and likewise with this so 360 minus okay so that would be 360 minus 306 that is 53 degrees 4 minutes and 43 seconds and that is now from south going to east and line BC is 1 degrees 1 degree, 41 minutes, and 0, 2 minutes from south going to east. Okay. Next is 185. So, from south, uh, rotating clockwise, the angle is here. And to get the angle, that would be 180 minus, uh, 195 minus 180. So, coincidentally, 
yung magtitirang angle is in reference already with the north. Therefore, that is 195 minus 180. Okay? Then, the angle is 15 degrees, 31 minutes, and 54 seconds. Okay? Next, we have the 104 degrees. So, 0 to 90, 90 to 180. So, the angle is here. But from the south, that is 104. The angle that I need is in reference with the north. So, what I'm going to do is 180. So, 180. Oh, no, no, no. 180 minus 104 degrees. And that is 75 minutes, 24 seconds, and 24 minutes and 40 seconds. And take note, it is from north going to west. And lastly, we have our 26 degrees. So 26 degrees from south going to west is the same. So from south going to west. Okay? So now I already have my bearing. The next thing that I need to solve would be the departure. So, uh, simply lang yan. Yung sa departure natin, it is uh, this formula. Uh -huh. Wait. Where is that? Uh, where's the PDF? This one. Okay, so from our lecture, ayan, lat, uh, departure is simply the length times the sine, while the latitude is the length times cosine the angle. Okay, so for latitude, cosine, for departure, sine. Okay, so for the departure, we are going to use the sine function. What is the length? The length is 647 times sign and the angle which is the bearing. So, yun lang. Then, meron ka ng departure. Okay? So, since it is in the east, it is positive. For the, uh, for the latitude, it is the length cosine of the bearing. And since it is, uh, it is in the south, it is negative. Okay? Okay. Isa pa. So, for the departure, it is the length. What is the length of line BC? It is 203.03 times sine. Sine of the bearing. And the bearing is 1 degree, 41 minutes, and 0, 02 seconds. And since it is, uh, since it is uh, on the east, east is positive, di ba? East, it is positive 5.966. So, it would be better if we are going to have it in three decimal places. Okay? Next, for the departure, uh, for the latitude. For the latitude, we have the length of the line BC, which is 203.03 .03, times cosine of your bearing. And that is equivalent to 202.924. And this time, it is in the south. Therefore, it is negative. Okay? Next, we have the uh, line CD. For line CD, and we are uh, we are in the departure, it is the length 720.35 times the sine of the bearing. Okay? That is the bearing. And since it is in the north, and the, the north is positive, it is equivalent to uh, 192.889. And for the latitude, it is the cosine length times the cosine of the bearing. And that is equivalent to 694.045. It is positive because it is in the east. Okay? So, we already have our departure. And we already have our um, latitude. Now, for the misclosure, ang gagawin natin is to get the sum. Okay, you add this, including the sign, add all the departure, including the sign, yan, and equal sign, this will be the sum. Okay, ipag-add mo lahat ng latitude, latitude, including the sign, including the sign, 
including the sign, it will give you 0 0.076. So this is the misclosure on the departure, and this is the misclosure on the latitude. Okay? Okay, so the next thing that we need to do is the compass rule. So we need to balance our traverse, our closed traverse. So kung saan mag-start, dun din mag-finish. Okay? Now for the compass rule, for the compass rule, it is the uh, misclosure on the departure divided by the total perimeter or yung total haba ng uh, traverse natin times the length of the course. Okay? So for the for the CD or the misclosure on the departure, it is 0 0.026 divided by the perimeter. What is the total perimeter? The total perimeter is simply the summation of all of this. 647.25 plus 203.03 plus 720.35 plus 610.24 plus 285.13 is equivalent to 2,466 meter. This is the perimeter. Okay? So, dito na yan. So, the misclosure divided by the perimeter. So, Actually, itong, uh, this one is, uh, you're going to copy this from A, B, B, C, B, uh, C, D, D, E, N, E, A. Ang magpapalit lang dito would be the length of the course. And the length of the course is uh, dictated by the line. And that is line A, B. Ano ba yung line A, B natin? What is the distance line A, B? That is 517. Point zero uh, point five four to one, and that is equivalent to zero point zero zero seven. So point zero two six over. So naka calculator ako just to check. Kung tama yung aking input. Okay, so mali yung uh, length of course. Bakit? Ang uh, sabi natin, it is the length of course. It should be this. Hin uh, this equation here is for the uh, this is for the comp uh, transit rule. Okay? Yeah, it is for the transit rule. Okay, yes, nagkamali tayo. So, on this one, Nagkamali ako ng input. So, hindi dapat yung traverse. It is not uh, it is not the departure nor the latitude. It is the uh, it is this length here. Okay? So, copy and we have to paste it there. 647.25 Actually, kaya tama yung sagot dyan because I used Excel here. So, if kaya nyo tong ipas i-input sa Excel, then well and good. I just uh, showed here the solution para masundan nyo yung solution natin sa mga hindi pa well-versed with Excel. Okay? But the answers here are correct. Kung itatry nyo yan sa calculator nyo, lalabas yung sagot na ito. Ito yung mga sagot nyo. Okay? Then, we have here 6, 10, 24. And lastly, 285, 13. Okay. So, itry natin sa calculator natin. We have 0 0.026 divided by uh, 2466 times 647.25. And that is 0 0.0068. And that is 0 0.007. Okay. That is for the departure. Now, for the latitude, ang magpapalit lang sa latitude natin is the 0 
it is no longer the 0 0.026, it is the 0 0.076. Okay. 0 0.076. Palitan natin. 0 0.076. 0 0.076. 0 0.076. 0 0.076 and 0 0.076 okay, yung 0 0.076 na yan is the misclosure on the latitude ito yun and we have the uh, length of the course okay, length of the course this 388.815 is incorrect because that is the uh, latitude and ito yung course natin so, 6425, kopyahin natin. 647.25. Let's place it here para madaling kopyahin. Copy. Change. Copy. Change. Copy. Then, change it here. That's 720. I repeat, tama itong mga sagot natin dyan because uh, I generated that with the help of Excel. So, kaya, kung kaya nyo siyang i-Excel, then well and good, no? Mas mabilis yung masosolve yung problems natin. So, yan. So, to verify, i-try natin i -calc -Q. So, we have here 0 0.076 over 2466 times... Uh, yung AB natin, 647.25. And that is 0 0.0199. And that is 0 0.02. Okay? Now, the next thing that we need to do is to create another uh, column. Column for co uh, correction on the departure. Column on the correction on the latitude. Then, another column for the adjusted departure and adjusted latitude. Okay? So, kopyahin natin yung correction sa departure. Okay? This is the correction for the de uh, departure or la on line AB, line BC, line CD, line uh, DE, and line EA. Then, the correction for the latitude on line AB, BC, CD, DE, and EA are all this. So, kukopyahin lang natin. Ilagay na natin dito. So, the corrections that uh, we were able to compute are this. Okay? I repeat, it is much better if we're going to have it in three decimal places. Okay? Now, ang susunod natin gawin here, susunod natin gawin, take note, dito sa sa miss, uh, miss closure natin, it is 0 0.026. Ibig sabihin, we exceeded by 0 0.026. So, in order to bring it back to 0, in, over, in order to balance it to 0, we are going to subtract 0 0.026 to the total, uh, total traverse on the the uh, departure. So, it would be latitude minus the core depth. Latitude, so 388.815 minus 0 0.007 is equivalent to negative 388.835. Negative 202.942 minus 0 0.002 is equivalent to negative 202.948. 694.045 minus uh, point zero. Ah, mali. Departure pala, sorry, sorry. 192.89 minus point zero zero eight, And that is equivalent to 192.881. Okay? Next is the latitude. Latitude... The misclosure in the latitude, again, is 0 0.76, which means that we exceeded. Okay? So, in order to balance that, we're going to subtract the, uh, the distributed 0 
So for the latitude, it is 388.815 minus 0 0.020. Okay? Medyo nag nalito lang tayo kanina sa una. Departure is for the core depth. 5.97 minus 0 0.002 is 5.964. Okay? Yan. Now, for the latitude, we have negative 388.815 minus 0 0.02, and that is 388.835. Then, negative 202.924 minus 0 0.006 is negative 202.948. And 694.045, that is positive, minus 0 0.022. And... Okay, so the rest is the same procedure. Now, how, how are we going to check if our answer is correct? If we are going to get the summation, the algebraic summation of all of this, ibig sabihin, kasama yung sign, algebraic summation, it should be equivalent to zero. Equivalent to zero. Okay? Pag zero yan, then our answer is correct. Now, what if it uh, is what if our mis uh, misclosure is negative? If this is negative, if this is also negative, then we are going to add all of this with respect to their departure. Then for the core lot, we are going to add that with, their, uh, with respect to their latitude if this is positive. Pag positive ito, uh, negative ito. Pag negative ito, positive ito. Okay? Gets ba? Okay. So, balik natin. That is positive. This is also positive. And this is now our adjusted departure. So, this is what we're going to use as the departure. And this is the values that we're going to use for the latitude. Okay. Next will be the balance of departures and latitudes using transit rule. So, for the transit rule, ganun din. Same procedure. Kopihin na natin yung nasa taas. Uh, para hindi na tayo masyado mag-edit. Okay. Okay, now for this one, ganun pa rin, uh, simulan natin with the uh, azimuth, convert it, ah, iba rin, iba pa, hindi pala na-adjust. Wait, let me adjust our azimuth here. Okay, uh, never mind, I'll adjust it na lang pagbigay ko sa handouts, okay? The important thing is this azimuth here in the bearing, okay? So, yeah, so what we need to do is... The, to have our uh, departure and latitude, then we are now going to solve for the core depth and core lat using the transit rule. Okay? Now, for the transit rule, it is the uh, missed closure divided by the summation of, of the departure times the departure of the course. Okay? So, ganun pa rin naman, because it is the same problem, we have our misclosure as 0 0.026. And again, here, our misclosure as 0 0.075. But this time, ang gagawin natin, it is the misclosure divided by the summation of the absolute value, the summation of the absolute value times the departure of the course. Okay? So, kukunin natin yung summation nila. Ipag add mo ito, add this, add this, excluding the sign, add this, add this, excluding the sign, add this, excluding the sign. And that is equivalent to 1,432.586. Likewise with the latitude, add this, excluding the sign, because it is absolute, so that would become positive. So absolute 202.942. 
absolute 694.045 plus absolute 153.708 plus absolute 255.919 and that is equivalent to 1,695.43. Okay? So, to solve for the uh, correction, it is simply the missed closure divided by the summation of the departure times the departure of uh, the line that we are uh, the correction of the line that we are trying to solve and that is ab so copying ko lang 517.541 so 517.541 so ang magbabago lang dito is the the values here okay value na yan because ang ilalagay natin diyan would be the departure next we have 0 0.026 divided by the summation of the departure, which is this, times the departure of line BC. Yan. Then, it is equivalent to 0 0.00. Uh, because it is only 3 decimal, so 0 yung correction niya. Okay? Next, we have uh, the depart, uh, the, we have uh, the misclosure divided by the summation of the depart, uh, departure times what is the length of the departure of CD? It is 192.889. So, times 182.889. And that is equivalent to 0 0.004. Ganon din yung latitude natin. So, for the latitude, it is 0. Uh, for the latitude, it is 0. 0, 7, 6, kasi ang misclosure natin is here, 0 0.076 divided by 1.695.43 uh, and that is the summation of latitude. Okay? So, 0 0.076 divided by the summation of the departure. Ah, no. This is not departure anymore. This is latitude. Okay? So, palitan natin. It should be latitude. 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 Latitude and we have here latitude. Okay, next for blind BC, the misclosure divided by the summation of the latitude times the latitude of line BC. And that is equivalent to 202.942. Okay? And that is equivalent to 0 0.09009. Dito, uh, we are not going to consider the sign because uh, um, hindi natin dyan i-base. Okay? So, again, I am going to copy the values that I were able to solve. That we were able to solve, rather. So, 0 0.02 and so on. Okay, again, I will be basing the sign of my second term with the sign of the departure in the latitude misclosure. Since the departure misclosure is 0 0.026 positive, itong mga nasolve nating core, core depth would be subtracted with the respective departure. Okay, so ito yan. So, for the uh, adjusted latitude here, kung titignan nyo, it is negative uh, 388.815 minus uh, core lat, it is 0 0.02. 0 0.02. And this is 0 0.0 uh, 388.835. And that is negative. Okay? Why? Because the misclosure of the latitude is positive, therefore, I am going to subtract the core lat with the respective latitude. If, for example, itong latitude natin dito, if itong latitude natin is negative, i-add ko itong mga to. Dahil negative yan, i-add ko itong mga to. So, 388.815 plus 0 0.02 pag negative yan. 
But since it is positive, then I am going to subtract this. Okay? So, ganon. Now, to check if our answers are correct, to get, uh, if you're going to get the algebraic sum of the adjusted departure, it should be 0. Kasi, binawas natin yung this uh, binawas natin yung mga correction. So, it should be 0. Okay? Next would be the uh, computation of area by the MD and DPD method. Okay? So, area by uh, division into simple figures. So, for example, you did a survey and the bold uh, line here, the lines here, are the boundaries of the uh, lot okay so one of the best method to use is to sim uh, simply uh, divide your figures into simpler uh, triangles then from there you can easily solve for the area so pag na divide mo na siya ng mas maliliit na triangles you can now solve for the area where area is equivalent to the square root of ds times s minus a times s minus b times s minus c. Okay? S is a, uh, a plus b plus c divided by 2. Or area can also be 1 over a times b sine c if you have your angles. But if not, then uh, you can use the other, ex uh, other formula given that you have the 3 sides okay another method would be the double meridian distance method okay so requires balance departures and latitude normally obtained in traverse computation meridian distance of traverse this core uh, traverse course is the perpendicular distance from the midpoint okay from the midpoint of the course to the reference meridian so a reference meridian is usually placed through the most western uh, westerly traverse station okay so this time we are going to uh, uh, have our reference with the departure okay so the departure parallel to the departure and kung ito yung departure natin these are your parallel lines and uh, it is normally uh, the uh, midpoint, the distance from the midpoint of the course of the reference. So, ito, ito yung ating mga midpoints. Midpoints, yan. Okay. Next would be, ano, based on the consideration described, the following general rules can be applied in calculating the DMD. Okay, so madali lang naman tandaan ito. The DMD of the first course is its departure. The DMD of any traverse course is equal to the DMD of the preceding course plus the departure of the preceding course plus the departure of the course itself. Mamaya, mas maintindihan natin yan. Okay? Then the area of each figure equals the meridian distance of a course times its balance latitude. Okay? Next would be area by double parallel distance method. So, this is the last method. So, requires balance departure and latitudes normally obtained in the traverse. So, after natin kanina, uh, a while ago, we were, uh, we were able to solve for the balance latitude and departure. And after doing so, we can now proceed uh, by solving our area. Okay? So, parallel distance of traverse course is perpendicular to the distance from the midpoint of the course uh, to the uh, reference parallel. This time, it is the latitude, okay? Parallel distance. And ito yung perpendicular distance natin. Okay? So, the rule is, the DPD of the first course is the latitude of, okay? The DPD of any traverse course is equal to the DPD of the preceding course plus the latitude of the preceding course, plus the latitude of the course itself. Okay? Okay, so we have here an illustrative problem. So, we, tapos na natin to. Pag meron kang bearing, you can now solve for your latitude. You can solve for your departure. Okay?
Yan. Pag latitude, cosine. Pag departure, sine. So, pa, uh, pag north, positive. Pag south, negative. Try this on, uh, on your own. And dapat ganito yung mga lalabas na sagot. If you do not want it on the north or south tables, you can have it as positive, positive, negative, 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 positive, positive. Okay? As long as na tama yung mga values nyo. Okay? Okay. Uh, one of the advantage of this is it's easier to determine the misclosure. Kasi positive minus negative will give you the misclosure. Positive minus negative will give you the misclosure. Okay? Yan. So, if you already have your misclosure, by, uh, if you already have your misclosure, then you can solve for the correction and adjust. Okay? Adjust your latitude in departure. This time, ang ginamit sa example na to is the compass method. Again, I encourage you to try this on your own. Dapat makuha nyo rin itong mga uh, correction na ito. Okay? So, the misclosure is uh, the misclosure here is 1461.29 minus 1444.48 That is 16.81 for the departure. Uh, for the latitude. Now, for the departure, it is 18.08. Okay? Since it is positive, it is positive, the, indi the individual correction would be subtracted. Okay? So, yeah. Hindi ko na-explain yan because I also explained it sa example natin kanina. Now, I already have here my adjusted uh, latitude and I already have here my adjusted departure. Now, to have the adjusted length, it is simply the square root of 491.9 squared plus 45.74 squared. Parang x squared times y squared, uh, x squared plus y squared, then get the square root. Okay? Ganun lang yan. Then, I will already have my new bearing. Okay? So, for the uh, bearing, it is uh, departure over latitude. Then, you can have your angle. So, paano lumabas yung 5 degrees? You have there your uh, departure, which is 45. Uh, shift tan. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, tangent theta is equivalent to x over y. So, magiging... Uh, transpose yung tangent. So, theta is equivalent to shift tan x over y. And x here is equivalent to 45.74 divided by 491.9. And yun. You have 5.31 and uh, just simply click the angle button. You will be having 5 degrees, 18 minutes, 44.82 seconds. And it is from both uh, both are positive so it is north east okay so positive kanan so i repeat it is simply shift tangent x divided by y then you will be given your angle so since positive positive si latitude so north positive si departure so east this ta dito sa cd negative si uh, latitude so it is south Neg, uh, but positive si departure, then it is east. Okay? So, I already have the adjusted bearing. I adjusted, yeah, adjusted bearing. Now, the next problem is how are we going to solve for the area using the DMD and the DPD method? Okay. So, I prepared here an Excel para mas maintindihan, makikita natin na gumagalaw yung numbers. So, mas madaling intindihin yung discussion. Okay. So, according to the rule, according to the rule, for the DMD, the DMD of uh, the first line is equivalent to the departure. So, the DMD of the first line is equivalent to the departure. Okay? So, that is simply departure. Okay? 
Yeah. Next, the DMD of any succeeding uh any succeeding line is equivalent to the DMD of the previous plus the departure of the previous plus the departure of that line. Okay? I repeat, the DMD of any line is equivalent to the DMD of the previous plus the D, uh, the departure of the previous line plus the departure of its current line. Okay? So, ulitin lang natin, the, D, the, D, the DMD of the previous plus the departure of the previous plus the departure of the current line. Okay? So, this is equivalent to the DMD of the previous plus the departure of the previous plus the departure of the current line. Okay. I hope nasusundan niya dahil medyo madali lang siya. Now, to check if you are uh, if your answer is correct, the DMD should be equal with the uh, the D, the last DMD should be equal with the departure but opposite in sign. So kung titignan niyo yung uh, adjusted departure natin here is negative 544.09 is the same with the DMD but they have opposite in sign. Okay? Now, to solve for the double area, it is simply the DMD times the latitude. Okay? So, kung kanina ang ginamit natin is the departure, this time, the latitude. So, times this. Okay? So, this one, we have the DMD times the latitude. So, again, it is equivalent to the DMD times the latitude. Okay? So, simply copy that. Pinakita ko lang yung uh, procedure. But, uh, to make it easier, we can simply copy that. Okay? Next uh, is to get the summation. So, the summation is equivalent to the sum. Okay? It is the sum of this. And that's it. That is your double area. Okay, take note that is your double area. Therefore, area is equivalent to the absolute value. The absolute value of this. Area is equivalent to... Okay, okay. Equivalent to this divided by negative 1 because we need the absolute value. Okay? That is now the area of your lot. Okay? Okay, what if we try now the DPD method? So, will the answer be the same? Let's see. So, for the DPD, according to the rule, the DPD of the first line is equivalent to the latitude of the first line. Okay? The DPD of any succeeding line is equivalent to the DPD of the previous line plus the latitude of the previous line plus the latitude of the current line. Okay? Again, the DPD of the current line is equivalent to the DPD of the previous line plus the latitude of the previous line plus the latitude of the current line. I repeat, uh, the DPD of the current line is equivalent to the latitude of the previous plus the latitude, uh, the DPD of the previous plus the latitude of the previous line plus the latitude of the current line. Okay, so ganun lang ulit. So we have 500 minus, ah uh, no, 500 plus uh, 1,000 plus this. And we have 
this is equivalent to this plus the latitude of the current, I the previews plus the latitude of the current. And they should have the same answer, the latitude of the last line and the DPD of the last line, but opposite in sign. So correct. Okay. Then get the sum. Get the sum. So sum. Actually, pwede nyo i-drag to dyan, but to uh, sa mga medyo hindi pa acquainted with uh, Excel. So, sum is equivalent to yan, all of these cells. Uh, okay. Wait. No, no, no. Mali. Nasa DPD po pala tayo. Of course, that would be zero. Now, uh, Let's proceed with the area. So for the area, area is simply the DPD times the uh, departure. So ang ginamit kasi natin sa pagkuha ng DPD is latitude. So since hindi natin ginamit si departure kanina, siya yung gagamitin natin sa 2A. So DPD times the departure, adjusted departure. Next, we have the DPD times the adjusted departure. Then we have here the DPD times the adjusted departure. Okay? Pero hindi nyo kailangan isa-isahin yan. You can simply drag. Okay? So then get the sum. And uh, the sum is equivalent to this. Okay. They are the same. Okay? So, the area, the area is equivalent to this divided by 2. Bakit divided by 2? Kasi, ito 2A. If you transpose, uh, if you multiply or divide both sides by A, magiging A is equivalent to uh, this value over I repeat because that is 2A and we only need A. So they are the same. 